In mathematics, the mean value theorem states, roughly, that for a given planar arc between two endpoints, there is at least one point at which the tangent to the arc is parallel to the secant through its endpoints. This theorem is used to prove statements about a function on an interval starting from local hypotheses about derivatives at points of the interval. More precisely, if f f is a continuous function on the closed interval a b display style a b and differentiable on the open interval a b display style a b then there exists a point c display style c in a b display style a b such that f c equals f b minus f a b minus a display style f c equals frac f b f a b a it is one of the most important results in real analysis topic history A special case of this theorem was first described by Parameshvara 1370 to 1460 from the Kerala School of Astronomy and Mathematics in India in his commentaries on Govindasvami and Bhaskara II A restricted form of the theorem was proved by Michel Roll in 1691 the result was what is now known as Roll's theorem and was proved only for polynomials without the techniques of calculus the mean value theorem in its modern form was stated and proved by Augustin Louis Cauchy in 1823. Topic formal statement let f a b r display style f a b to mathbound r be a continuous function on the closed interval a b display style a b and differentiable on the open interval a b display style a b where a b display style a then there exists some c display style c in a b display style a b such that f c equals f b minus f a b minus a display style f c equals frac f b f a b a. The mean value theorem is a generalization of Rolle's theorem, which assumes f a equals f b display style f a equals f b, so that the right-hand side above is zero. The mean value theorem is still valid in a slightly more general setting. One only needs to assume that f a b r display style f a b to mathbound r is continuous on a b display style a b and that for every x display style x in a b display style a b the limit Lim H zero F X plus H minus F X H display style lim underscore H to zero frac F X plus H F X H exists as a finite number or equals infinity display style inf t or Minus infinity display style inf t if finite that limit equals f x display style f x an example where this version of the theorem applies is given by the real valued cube root function mapping x x one three display style x to x caret frac one three whose derivative tends to infinity at the origin. Note that the theorem, as stated, is false if a differentiable function is complex-valued instead of real-valued. For example, define f x equals e x i display style f x equals e caret she for all real x display style x then f two pi minus f zero equals zero 
equals 0 2 pi minus 0 display style f 2 pi f 0 equals 0 equals 0 2 pi minus 0 while f x does not equal 0 display style f x n e q 0 for any real x display style x these formal statements are also known as lagrange's mean value theorem topic proof the expression f b minus f a b minus a display style frac f b f a b a gives the slope of the line joining the points a f a display style a f a and b f b display style b f b which is a chord of the graph of f display style f while f x display style f x gives the slope of the tangent to the curve at the point x f x display style x f x thus the mean value theorem says that given any chord of a smooth curve we can find a point lying between the end points of the chord such that the tangent at that point is parallel to the chord the following proof illustrates this idea define g x equals f x minus r x display style g x equals f x r x where r display style r is a constant since f display style f is continuous on a b display style a b and differentiable on a b display style a b the same is true for g display style g we now want to choose r display style r so that g display style g satisfies the conditions of rolle's theorem namely g a equals g b f a minus r a equals f b minus r b r b minus r equals f b minus f a r equals f b minus f a b minus r display style begin aligned g a equals g b and i f f f a r equals f b r b and i f f r b a equals f b f a and i f f r equals frac f b f a b a c d o t end aligned by Rolle's theorem since g display style g is differentiable and g a equals g b display style g a equals g b there is some c display style c in a b display style a b for which g c equals 0 display style g c equals 0 and it follows from the equality g x equals f x minus r x display style g x equals f x r x that g x equals f x minus r g C equals zero G C equals F C minus R equals zero F C 
equals R equals F B minus F A B minus a display style begin aligned and G X equals F X R and G C equals zero and G C equals F C R equals zero and right arrow F C equals R equals frac F B F A B A end aligned. Topic A simple application. Assume that f is a continuous, real-valued function, defined on an arbitrary interval i of the real line. If the derivative of f at every interior point of the interval i exists and is zero, then f is constant in the interior. Proof: Assume the derivative of f at every interior point of the interval i exists and is zero. Let a, b be an arbitrary open interval in i by the mean value theorem. There exists a point c in a, b such that zero equals F C equals F B minus F A B minus A display style zero equals F C equals frac F B F A B A. This implies that F A equals F B. Thus, f is constant on the interior of I and thus is constant on I by continuity. See below for a multivariable version of this result. Remarks Only continuity of f, not differentiability, is needed at the endpoints of the interval I. No hypothesis of continuity needs to be stated if I is an open interval, since the existence of a derivative at a point implies the continuity at this point. See the section continuity and differentiability of the article derivative. The differentiability of f can be relaxed to one-sided differentiability, a proof given in the article on semi-differentiability. Topic: <laughs> Cauchy's mean value theorem. Cauchy's mean value theorem, also known as the extended mean value theorem, is a generalization of the mean value theorem. It states, if functions f and g are both continuous on the closed interval a, b, and differentiable on the open interval a, b, then there exists some c element of a, b, such that f b minus f a g c equals g b minus g a f C display style f b f a g c equals g b g a f c. Of course, if g a does not equal g b and if g c does not equal zero, this is equivalent to f c g c equals f b minus f a g. B minus G A display style frac F C G C equals frac F B F A G B G A. Geometrically, this means that there is some tangent to the graph of the curve A B R two T F T G T Display style begin cases A B to Math B F R carrot two T Mapsto F T G T end cases which is parallel to the line defined by the points F A G A and F B G B. However, Cauchy's theorem does not claim the existence of such a tangent in all cases where f a g a and f b g b are distinct points, since it might be satisfied only for some value c with f c. Topic G C zero. In other words, a value for which the mentioned curve is stationary. In such points, no tangent to the curve is likely to be defined at all. An example of this situation is the curve given by t t three one minus t two. Display style t maps to t caret three one t caret two. 
which on the interval minus one, one goes from the point minus one, zero to one, zero, yet never has a horizontal tangent, however it has a stationary point in fact a cusp at t equals zero. Cauchy's mean value theorem can be used to prove L'Hopital's rule. The mean value theorem is the special case of Cauchy's mean value theorem when g t equals t equals topic proof of Cauchy's mean value theorem equals the proof of Cauchy's mean value theorem is based on the same idea as the proof of the mean value theorem suppose g a does not equal g b define h x topic f x minus r g x where r is fixed in such a way that h a h b namely h a equals h b f a minus r g a equals f b minus r g b r g B minus G A equals F B minus F A R equals F B minus F A G B minus G A Display style begin aligned H A equals H B and I F F F A R G A equals F B R G B and I F F R G B G A equals F B F A and I F F R equals frac F B F A G B G A end aligned since F and G are continuous on A B and differentiable on A B the same is true for H. All in all, H satisfies the conditions of Rolle's theorem, consequently, there is some C in A, B, for which H C equals zero. Now using the definition of H we have, zero equals H C equals F C minus R G C equals F C minus F B minus F A G B minus G A G C display style zero equals H C equals F C R G C equals F C left frac F B F A G B G A right G C. Therefore F C equals F B minus F A G B minus G A G C Display style F C equals frac F B F A G B G A G C which implies the result. If G A topic G B. Then, applying Rolle's theorem to G, it follows that there exists C in A B for which G C zero. Using this choice of C, Cauchy's mean value theorem trivially holds. Topic: <laughs> Generalization for determinants. Assume that. F G display style F G and H display style H are differentiable functions on A B display style A B that are continuous on A B display style A B Define D x equals F x G x H x F A G A H A F B G B H B display style D x equals left begin array C C C F x and G x and H x F A and G A and H A F B and G B and H B end array right there exists C element of A B display style C in A B such that D C equals zero display style D C equals zero. 
Notice that dx equals f x g x h x f a g a h a f b g b h b. Display style dx equals left begin array c c c f x and g x and h x f a and g a and h a f b and g b and h b end array right. And if we place h x equals one display style h x equals one, we get Cauchy's mean value theorem. If we place h x equals one, display style h x equals one, and g x equals x, display style g x equals x, we get Lagrange's mean value theorem. The proof of the generalization is quite simple. Each of d a, display style d a, and d b, display style d b, are determinants with two identical rows. Hence, d a equals d b equals zero, display style d a equals d b equals zero. The Rolle's theorem implies that there exists c element of a b display style c in a b such that d c equals zero display style d c equals zero. Topic: Mean value theorem in several variables. The mean value theorem generalizes to real functions of multiple variables. The trick is to use parametrization to create a real function of one variable, and then apply the one variable theorem. Let G display style G be an open convex subset of R n display style math bound R caret n, and let f G R display style f G to math bound R be a differentiable function. Fix points x y element of g display style x y in g and define g t equals f one minus t x plus t y Display style g t equals f big one t x plus tie big. Since g display style g is a differentiable function in one variable, the mean value theorem gives g one minus g zero equals g c. Display style g one g zero equals g c for some c display style c between zero and one, but since g one equals f y display style g one equals f y and g zero equals F x display style g zero equals f x. Computing g c display style g c. Explicitly, we have f y minus f x equals f one minus c x plus c y y minus x display style f y f x equals nabla f big 1 c x plus psi big c d o t y x where display style nabla denotes a gradient and display style c d o t a dot product Note that this is an exact analog of the theorem in one variable in the case n equals 1 display style n equals 1 This is the theorem in one variable By the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality the equation gives the estimate f y minus f x f 1 minus C x plus C y y minus x 
Display style big F Y F X big L E Q big Nabla F big one C X plus psi big 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 Y X big In particular, when the partial derivatives of F Display style F are bounded F Display style F is Lipschitz continuous and therefore uniformly continuous. Note that F display style F is not assumed to be continuously differentiable or continuous on the closure of G display style G. However, in order to use the chain rule to compute G display style G, we really do need to know that F display style F is differentiable the existence of the x display style x and y display style y partial derivatives is not sufficient by itself as an application of the above we prove that f display style f is constant if g display style g is open and connected and every partial derivative of f display style f is zero pick some point x zero element of g display style x underscore zero in g and let g x equals f x minus F x zero display style g x equals f x f x underscore zero. We want to show g x equals zero display style g x equals zero for every x element of g display style x in g. For that, let E equals x element of G G x equals zero display style E equals x in G G x equals zero. Then E is closed and non-empty. It is open too for every x element of E display style x in E. G Y equals G Y minus G X zero Y minus X equals zero Display style big G Y big equals big G Y G X big L E Q zero big Y X big equals zero for every y display style y in some neighborhood of x display style x here it is crucial that x display style x and y display style y are sufficiently close to each other since g display style g is connected we conclude E equals G display style E equals G. The above arguments are made in a coordinate free manner, hence, they generalize to the case when G display style G is a subset of a Banach space. Topic: Mean value theorem for vector valued functions. There is no exact analog of the mean value theorem for vector valued functions. In Principles of Mathematical Analysis, Rudin gives an inequality which can be applied to many of the same situations to which the mean value theorem is applicable in the one dimensional case theorem. For a continuous vector valued function f a b r k Display style math bf f a b two math bound r caret k differentiable on a b display style a b 
there exists x element of a b display style x in a b such that f x 1 b minus a f b minus f a Display style Math BF F X G E Q Frac one B A Math BF F B Math BF F A Jean Dudon in his classic treatise Foundations of Modern Analysis discards the mean value theorem and replaces it by mean inequality as the proof is not constructive and one cannot find the mean value and in applications one only needs mean inequality. Serge Lang in analysis I uses the mean value theorem, in integral form, as an instant reflex, but this use requires the continuity of the derivative. If one uses the henstock kurzweil integral one can have the mean value theorem in integral form without the additional assumption that derivative should be continuous as every derivative is henstock kurzweil integrable. The problem is roughly speaking the following, if f, u room is a differentiable function where u r n is open and if x plus t h, x, h element of r n, t element of 0, 1 is the line segment in question lying inside u, then one can apply the above parametrization procedure to each of the component functions phi i. Topic one M of F in the above notation set Y X plus H. In doing so one finds points X plus T I H on the line segment satisfying F I X plus H minus F I X equals f i x plus t i h h display style f underscore i x plus h f underscore i x equals nabla f underscore i x plus t underscore i h c d o t h but generally there will not be a single point x plus t asterisk h on the line segment satisfying f I x plus h minus f i x equals f i x plus t h h Display style f underscore i x plus h f underscore i x equals nabla f underscore i x plus t caret asterisk h c d o t h for all i simultaneously. For example, define f zero two pi r two f x equals cos x sin x display style begin cases f 0 2 pi 2 math bf r caret 2 f x equals cos x sin x end cases then f 2 pi minus f 0 equals 0 element of r 2 Display style f two pi f zero equals math bf zero in math bf r carrot two. But f one x equals minus sin x. Display style f underscore one x equals sin x. And f two x equals Cos x display style f underscore two x equals cos x and never simultaneously zero as x display style x ranges over zero two pi display style left zero two pi right 
However a certain type of generalization of the mean value theorem to vector-valued functions is obtained as follows, let f be a continuously differentiable real-valued function defined on an open interval i, and let x as well as x plus h be points of i. The mean value theorem in one variable tells us that there exists some t asterisk between 0 and 1 such that f x plus h minus f x equals f x plus t h h display style f x plus h f x equals f x plus t caret asterisk h c d o t h on the other hand, we have, by the fundamental theorem of calculus followed by a change of variables f x plus h minus f x equals x x plus h f u d u equals Zero one F X plus T H D T H Display style F x plus H F x equals int underscore x carrot x plus H F U do equals left int underscore zero carrot one F x plus T H D T right C D O T H Thus, the value f x plus t asterisk h at the particular point t asterisk has been replaced by the mean value zero one f x plus t h d t display style in underscore zero caret one f x plus t h d t. This last version can be generalized to vector-valued functions. Lemma 1. Let U R N be open, F, U room continuously differentiable, and X element of U, H element of R N vectors such that the line segment X plus T H, 0 T1 remains in U. Then we have F X plus H minus F X equals 0 1 D F X plus T H D T H Display style F x plus H F x equals left in underscore zero carrot one D F x plus T H D T right C D O T H where df denotes the Jacobian matrix of F and the integral of a matrix is to be understood component wise. Proof. Let F one Fm denote the components of F and define G I zero one R G I T equals F I X plus T H Display style begin cases G underscore I zero one two Math BF R G underscore I T equals F underscore I X plus T H end cases Then we have F I X plus H minus F I X equals G I one Minus G I zero equals zero one G I T D T equals zero one J equals one N F I X J X plus T H H J D T equals J equals 
1 n o 1 f i x j x plus t h d t h j display style begin aligned and f underscore i x plus h f underscore i x equals g underscore i 1 g underscore i 0 equals in underscore 0 carrot 1 g underscore i t d t equals and in underscore 0 carrot 1 left sum underscore j equals 1 carrot n frac partial f underscore i partial x underscore j x plus t h h underscore j right d t equals Sum underscore j equals one carrot n left in underscore zero carrot one frac partial f underscore i partial x underscore j x plus th dt right h underscore j end aligned. The claim follows since df is the matrix consisting of the components f i x j display style tfrac partial f underscore i partial x underscore j lemma two. Let v a b room be a continuous function defined on the interval a b r. Then we have a B V T D T A B V T D T Display style left in underscore a carrot B V T D T right Lexland in underscore a carrot B V T D T Proof Let U in room denote the value of the integral U equals A B V T D T display style U equals in underscore a carrot B V T D T. Now we have using the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality U two equals U U equals a B V T D T U equals A B V T U D T A B V T U D T equals U A B V T D T Display style U carrot two equals Langle U U Wrangle equals left Langle in underscore a carrot B V T D T U right Wrangle equals in underscore a carrot B Langle V T U Wrangle D T Lexlant in underscore a carrot B V T C D O T U D T equals U in underscore a carrot B V T D T Now cancelling the norm of U from both ends gives us the desired inequality mean value inequality if the norm of df x plus th is bounded by some constant m for t in 0 1 then f x plus h minus f x m h display style f x plus h f x lexlant m h proof from lemma 1 and 2 it follows that F x plus h minus f x equals zero one d f x plus t h h d t zero one D F X plus T H H D T M H Display style f x plus h f x equals left in underscore zero carrot one d f x plus t h c d o t h d t right lexlant in underscore zero carrot one d f x plus t h c d o t h d t lexlant m h. Topic: Mean value theorems for definite integrals.
Topic: <laughs> First mean value theorem for definite integrals. Let f a b r be a continuous function. Then there exists c in a b such that a b f x d x equals f c b minus a display style in underscore a caret b f x d x equals f c b a since the mean value of f on a b is defined as 1 b minus a, a b f x d x display style frac 1 b a in underscore a caret b f x d x we can interpret the conclusion as f achieves its mean value at some c in a b. In general, if f a b r is continuous and g is an integrable function that does not change sign on a b, then there exists c in a b such that a b f x g x d x equals f c a B G X D X Display style in underscore a carrot B F X G X D X equals F C in underscore a carrot B G X D X Topic Proof of the first mean value theorem for definite integrals Suppose f a b r is continuous and g is a non-negative integrable function on a b. By the extreme value theorem, there exists m and m such that for each x in a b, m f x m display style m lexlant f x lexlant m and f a b equals m M display style f a b equals m m. Since g is non-negative, m a b g x d x a b f x g x d x m a B G X D X Display style M in underscore a carrot B G X D X Lexlant in underscore a carrot B F X G X D X Lexlant M in underscore a carrot B G X D X Now let I equals A B G X D X Display style I equals in underscore a carrot B G X D X If I equals zero Display style I equals zero We're done since zero A B F X G X D X zero display style zero lexlant in underscore a carrot b f x g x d x lexlant zero means a b f x g x d x equals zero Display style in underscore a carrot b f x g x d x equals zero. So for any c in a b a b f x g x d x equals f c i equals zero. 
Display style int underscore a carrot b f x g x dx equals f c i equals zero. If i does not equal zero, then m one i a b f x g x d x m Display style m lexlant frac one i in underscore a carrot b f x g x dx lexlant m. By the intermediate value theorem, f attains every value of the interval m m. So for some c in a b f c equals one i a b f x g X D X Display style F C equals frac one I in underscore a carrot B F X G X D X That is A B F X G X D X equals F C A B G X D X Display style int underscore a carrot B F X G X D X equals F C in underscore a carrot B G X D X. Finally, if G is negative on A, B, then M A B G X D X a B F X G X D X M A B G X D X Display style M in underscore a carrot B G X D X Lexlant in underscore a carrot B F X G X D X Lexlant M in underscore a carrot B G X D X and we still get the same result as above. Q E D Topic Second mean value theorem for definite integrals There are various slightly different theorems called the second mean value theorem for definite integrals. A commonly found version is as follows If g, a, b, r is a positive monotonically decreasing function and phi, a, b, r is an integrable function, then there exists a number x in a, b such that a, b, g, t, phi, t, d, t equals G A plus A X Phi T D T Display style in underscore a carrot B G T Vafi T D T equals G A carrot plus in underscore a carrot X Vafi T D T Here G A plus Display style G A carrot plus stands for Lim X A plus G X Display style Lim underscore X to a carrot plus G X the existence of which follows from the conditions. Note that it is essential that the interval A B contains B. A variant not having this requirement is if g a b r is a monotonic not necessarily decreasing and positive function and phi a b r is an integrable function then there exists a number x in a b such that a b g t phi t d t equals g a plus a X Phi T D T plus G B minus X 
B Phi T D T Display style in underscore a carrot B G T Vafi T D T equals G A carrot plus in underscore a carrot X Vafi T D T plus G B carrot in underscore X carrot B Vafi T D T Topic Mean value theorem for integration fails for vector valued functions. If the function G display style G returns a multi-dimensional vector then the MVT for integration is not true even if the domain of G display style G is also multi-dimensional for example consider the following two-dimensional function defined on an n display style n dimensional cube G 0 2 Pi N R two G X one X N equals sin X one plus plus X N cos X one plus plus X N display style begin cases G zero two pi carrot N two math bound R carrot two G X underscore one C D O T S X underscore N equals left sin X underscore one plus C D O T S plus X underscore N cos X underscore one plus C D O T S plus X underscore N right end cases Then by symmetry it is easy to see that the mean value of G Display style G over its domain is zero 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 two Pi N G X one X N D X one D X N equals zero zero Display style in underscore zero two pi carrot n g x underscore one c d o t s x underscore n d x underscore one c d o t s d x underscore n equals zero zero. However, there is no point in which g equals zero zero. Display style g equals zero zero because g equals one display style g equals one everywhere. Topic a probabilistic analog of the mean value theorem. Let x and y be non-negative random variables such that e x x s t y display style x lexland underscore street y i e x is smaller than y in the usual stochastic order. Then there exists an absolutely continuous non-negative random variable z having probability density function f z x equals p r y greater than x minus p r x greater than x e y minus e x x zero. Display style f underscore z x equals p r y greater than x p r x greater than x over room e y room e x q quad x x line zero. Let g be a measurable and differentiable function such that e g x e g y. Then e g z is finite and e g y minus e g x equals e g z e y minus e x Display style room e g y room e g x equals room e g z room e y room e x. Topic: Generalization in complex analysis. As noted above, the theorem does not hold for differentiable complex-valued functions. 
Instead, a generalization of the theorem is stated such: let f omega c be a holomorphic function on the open convex set omega, and let a and b be distinct points in omega. Then there exist points u, v on lab, the line segment from a to b, such that r e f u equals r e f b minus f a b minus a display style mathrm re f u equals mathrm re left frac f b f a b a right i m f v equals i m f b minus f a b minus a display style mathrm m f v equals mathrm m left frac f b f a b a right where re is the real part and m is the imaginary part of a complex valued function topic see also Newmark beta method mean value theorem divided differences racetrack principle Stolarski mean topic notes topic external links Hayeswinkel, Michiel, ed. 2001 1994. Cauchy Theorem. Encyclopedia of Mathematics, Springer Science Plus Business Media BV, Kluwer Academic Publishers, ISBN 978-1-55608-010-4 Planetmouth, Mean Value Theorem Weistein, Eric W. Mean Value Theorem. Mathworld. Weistein, Eric W. Cauchy's Mean Value Theorem. Mathworld. Mean Value Theorem – Intuition Behind the Mean Value Theorem", at the Khan Academy.